Hi, Stamping Friends. It's Marilyn here with Stamping Creations with Marilyn. Here today to share a technique that I really enjoy using called Stamping Resist or Emboss Resist. Well, it's stamping too, but anyway, I love the heat embossing and how it makes the card pop when you when you add that. And today I'm going to show you a bit of a technique with using ink over that afterwards and hopefully you'll have some fun with it. I would love to have you post your creations on the comments under this video and on your page and tag me. That would be great. I'd love to see see your comments and see what what you make and it's great to be sharing those things with you. I will show you a couple other things when I turn the camera down and I will be what am I doing? I'm setting up some classes. If you're interested in any of those, please subscribe to my newsletter over on my website. And otherwise, just keep watching my Facebook pages and there will be updates quite often. Can't give you when, but I'm going to turn the camera down. Okay, that part worked. And hi, Terry. I see your comment there. Lucky you're here watching. Thank you for joining me. And I will hopefully that's everything in the the line of where it should be. Looks like you can see the the desktop there. So so first of all, just again reminder that I do have this host code open if you're interested in anything and if you're not and you want to just chat, just give me a call. I would love to chat with you. The stamp set I'm going to use today is on page 22 of the new catalog called Lovely You. It comes as a bundle with this six, well it's called Lovely Label Pick Punch, but there's actually six different choices you have for, for making your, your punch designs there. And didn't have it here before but I'll show you all the different shapes and sizes that you can use for that particular punch so so a great bang for your buck like that and this bookmark I'm using is showing all the new in colors loving all of them so over the next few weeks I will be using lots of them in my designs so like I said this is my Stamp set I'm going to use, I will be using Versamark ink as well as Classic ink for some coloring. So to begin with, I have my eight and a half by five and a half piece of cardstock, which I will score at four and a quarter. And I know some of you have said you've had issues with trying to use the scoreboard. Um, my biggest suggestion, I guess, would be is practice makes perfect. But I do like it, and it will remain on my table more often than it had earlier because I am refinding, renewing my love for it. I also find that if I score my, oh no, not score, burnish my cardstock on my piercing mat, it seems to stay flatter. So I've started doing that. Um, this happened on the weekend. We were we were doing a class, and uh, one of the demonstrators had suggested you could use your silicone mat for stamping off instead of stamping on your your paper. And I did that, and then turned it over to use it, and it made quite a nice design. I'm quite tickled with that. So lots of things that you can do with that uh, silicone mat. So my card today, this is what I'm attempting to, to show you. My stamping wasn't, wasn't perfect in my world, but those of you who know me, I kind of like to have things exact, so I'm going to try to make that a little different this time. I have a layer of Just Jade, one of the new in colors. I am going to have a layer of black, which I didn't have on that one, and then my white. So I'm starting with white. I am going to heat emboss 
using Versamark and white embossing powder. So I'm going to stamp down the edge with this particular flower and then we will heat emboss it and I will show you how that just causes the the design to just pop when you when you do that. Of course Versamark on white is quite hard to to see. When I do any kind of stamping, whether it's Versamark or Classic Ink, if you stamp over the edge, it makes it look a little bigger. So I'm gonna hold that up to see if, if you can see, I'll tilt it a little bit, if you can see the, the shine on it, but I can here. And if we were allowed to have classes again and you were here, I would make sure that, that you could see it. I keep my embossing powder in a container like this rather than pouring it back in the, the lid and then I as long as it's big enough for my my piece of uh, cardstock I can just put the embossing powder on that way give it a good flick on the back if there's any pieces that have stuck where you don't want them a small paintbrush works really well and I have recently heard, I haven't tried it yet, but I have heard that our take your pick tool with the, the sticky end works well for that as well. So it'll get a little bit noisy for now. I'm going to heat emboss this. And I like to start my heat gun just hold in one place until I see it working. And then move it. There's no sense in moving it back and forth, back and forth. There you can see it start. And it doesn't take too, too long. And as long as it's all shiny, not powdery looking, it is melted. So that is the first step. The heat embossing, Versamark with white embossing powder over it and then melted. And if you run your fingers over it, it's smooth. It's not granular like it would be if it had not melted. So once I did that with it, I got my sponge roller and these come, still, still the box it was in, they come as two to a box. You have two extras which I haven't used yet because they don't, I'm, I'm sure you could wash them, I haven't tried that. What I do to clean them if I'm afraid I've got the wrong one, and I think this is my green one, so it's just run them on your paper. And in order to put the green color, like I have, you would end up using your classic ink. And you don't wanna rub like this because you'll end up with ridges on your roller. So you wanna do, pick up the ink this way, and I'm just gonna, move things a little bit so I don't have ink where I don't want it. When you start to put it on your your paper, you want to start from start off and end off. Make sense? Start off here, end off over there. And you can put as little or as much as you want. I have a couple other samples I'm going to show you when I'm finished, but for this one I'm just going to to uh, carry on making it as whatever shade of green I like. And this technique works well for almost any shape. Not so much about words that are 
more script like that, whether it would work over top of them or not. But like most techniques, you can just give it a try. And I'm sure you'll come up with something you like, something you'd be happy to be giving away to friends, family, especially this day and age with this COVID thing happening, it's nice to get some happy mail. So you can see it getting darker. I can see ridges in it, which isn't great, but they are straight. So I will do a few from the other way. And on my sample, and again, what I will be doing is stamping in black. So I really don't want this to be black in color. I found another technique that someone had shared and I will be trying it in the next little while and post it on my blog and probably on Facebook of um, making a nighttime scene and using the the brush ro or the foam rollers. We used to have a real hard roller and it uh, wasn't quite as easy. This is quite easy, quite something like paint in the fence, you know, up and down, up and down. So I'm thinking that's probably my the extent of my color that I want. And you can see that it didn't stick. The color will not stick in this case to the area that we embossed to here. And that's the whole idea. So I have a paper towel that I would take now and just virtually polish whatever ink was on top of there. You can see there's, there's a little bit. And there is your background, foreground, whatever you want to call it, for, for your card. So then, in this case, I will take words from this set. This set has a beautiful set of words. And they are script as well as block. You can find, find a greeting for everything you could imagine. So a very versatile set. And like I say, with the, the punch, it is a, a good deal when you get the bundle. So just because, and I am going to try and stamp it straight without getting my head in the camera. And there is my front layer. I always stamp all of my pieces before I put anything together. So, and this one, I would quite likely stamp something on the inside of it, but I don't have that stamp out right now. So I need adhesive. We have a new adhesive called Stamp and Seal. Looks similar, has more per, more inches, more feet per roll. Does work very well. Had a little bit of frustration with it not starting, but if you start it like this, it will, and sometimes it doesn't need that. And you don't need to press hard. I don't know if you can tell, but I'm just pressing real, whoops, let me again. Okay, start it. Pressing really light. And it does, okay. And there's some, I've read, don't press heavy. I've read, um, try flicking it. Like if you remember the, uh, hmm, there was a, a real strong one we just had that you had to check mark. I also read back on itself. So I'm gonna try that on the next one. So I'm going to put my just jade. Oh, look at that. It's too big. It's too big. I need to cut it. And I suppose I have this one too big. Yes. Oh, you know what? Instead of putting that Just Jade on there, because I have glue on it right now, I don't want to put this one. Maybe I'll just put the black behind it. That must have been the plan. There is also thinking of this adhesive, there is a 
um, Stampin' Seal Plus. And it is the stronger. And I have made a few envelopes and stuck them together with the plus and it's held. I tried to mail an envelope this morning and was out too soon before the post office opened and brought it back and even all the carrying around and, and whatever that I did in the car, it stuck together. So that was a good thing. So I'm going to use dimensionals on this and I don't know how many of you when you end up with this, I hope you don't throw it out because all of this is really useful. Still great pieces. You can cut them smaller. You can use them as strips. Great way to make more miles out of your dimensionals. So keep that in mind with the next sheet of them that you have, that you don't always have to use big ones. You can also cut these in half and most of the time they will do the same trick. So I'm just going to mount that. I think that's what I was, who knows what I was planning to begin with, but so there are my two cards. One with the black behind, one with the jade behind. Which one do you like better? Leave me a comment and I will be reading them after. I can't, I can't see them right now for, for the way the camera is. So I would like to share a couple other ones that I've made. This one I made with two of the stamps out of that set. If you take a note, there, oh, this one and this one. <laughs> Where's the other piece? And because they're photo, or they're not photopolymer, but they're, you mount them on the block. They're not on wood like we used to have them. You can mount them, and that's what I did. Put the two on the same block, and then stamped it as a border. Then I did the blue, thinking sky. But before I put the blue on, I punched out a circle from a post-it note and just stuck it where I thought the moon should be, or the sun. Did my my blue with the foam roller and then peeled it off and then I did use just a, a sponge dauber and the yellow to give it some color there and a word from this set as well on an arrow punched out image and that is the Mo Misty Moonlight designer or not designer card new cardstock and one that I had done earlier following on Facebook was one with just a, I'm going to call it an outline stamp, the, um, so you're just stamping the outline with Versamark with white on, I'm going to say Blushing Bride, I don't have that written down, and heat embossed, and that is your whole background layer, so, so those are some ideas for you, for using Versamark and embossing powder and it's for the the technique called emboss resist so i hope you enjoyed that like i said before please leave comments please post pictures of your creations i would love to see them and i'm planning on being back again thursday night at seven with a, a mystery stamping card i will post tomorrow the supplies that you will need to make the card along with me and we'll have some stamping time together have a good day and enjoy that sunshine out there.